Ronaldo, Cristiano Prati, uh, is my colleague at UFABC, and he'll be talking about crafting machine learning models in material science. So please, Ronaldo, the floor is, is all yours. Thanks for the introduction. Thanks for the opportunity to talk at the CINE conference. I'm a computer scientist at Federal University of ABC uh, in Brazil, and I'm a member of the Computational Material Science uh, Chemistry Division, uh, where uh, we are uh, part of a, a project that uh, aims to use machine learning to try to build models using uh, material science data, quantum chemistry data, right? And uh, today I have uh, choosing a topic that regarding a paper that we have just published uh, showing how we uh, fine tune uh, a model to achieve better performance uh, in predicting a, a property of uh, some materials. Um, we have this uh, wonderful talk about machine learning in material sciences yesterday by Professor Chu. And I do agree with his uh, views about the future of machine learning. I, I have let me see the transformation of many areas uh, using machine learning to uh, building larger and, and, and better research. Uh, this happened in bioinformatics and social network analysis in smart cities. Um, the new industry technology and, and, and many more. And more recent, uh, recently, we see many uh, approaches in material science research. And we have a piece uh, of demonstration yesterday by uh, Professor Chu. But uh, however, uh, this process is not uh, as easy as it could uh, appear uh, at the first view. Um, the process is uh, very uh, tricky and re requires many steps. So uh, we could be able to successfully develop machine learning models uh, applied to quantum chemistry data. Um, the first thing, like Professor Chu uh, told you us, us yesterday, is that you need to translate uh, the problem you have from application point of view to uh, a machine learning po point of view. You have to frame uh, a problem in a domain area to some of the uh, tasks that we can solve using machine learning. And furthermore, it's very difficult to uh, identify uh, and, and fix possible deficiencies in uh, the models. Uh, so uh, this talk is, uh, I'll try to uh, highlight some of work we have done in these directions uh, in this talk. Um, this is a picture that uh, illustrates the engineering pipeline of applying machine learning in, in, in any problem, and in particular in material science data. First of all, we need to, to collect the data. And this sometimes is uh, as easy as downloading a, a large file from a, a repository, or it's very difficult as you, you need to collect data and integrate it from many different sources. Then you need to process your data, you need to identify the pieces of data that are relevant to your, uh, your task. Um, the next step, you need to, to represent the, the data you have in a way that uh, machine learning algorithms can uh, be applied in. And finally, you need to, to build a model. You need to fit a model uh, to the data. And the way we see machine learning, uh, this is a definition of uh, Professor Thomas Mitchell. Uh, uh, we have uh, a task we want to solve. And uh, in machine learning, we have some specific tasks that we have very good algorithms for solving, like classification, regression, finding groups on data. 
And based on this task, we uh, use evidence, data, aiming to improve some, uh, uh, some process that can, and this improvement is measured by some uh, specific performance indicator, right? So this is the step that we need to transform the problem to a particular, uh, the, the problem in the domain space to a particular task that we can solve um, in machine learning, uh, using machine learning. Um, and then uh, in specifically for material science data, we need to find very good representations that capture information from the data and uh, so that the learning algorithms can use this information uh, to fit in the data. There are many options uh, available. This is a good review that uh, shows us, uh, uh, some of them. But in general, uh, your representation should be invariant into transformation. If you tr uh, rotate or uh, shift the data, uh, this does not. Uh, this should not uh, affect your representation. Um, there is one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, the representation should be unique. Uh, uh, this representation uh, should be continue, so we can build a function, uh, fit a, a function to the data. Uh, it should be uh, computational efficient. You should not uh, use more a, a large uh, computational resources to compute this representation. And it, it should also be uh, general enough so you can abstract from uh, the data you have collected, right? Um, so then uh, we have the data, we have uh, translated this data to a particular task uh, we can solve using machine learning. And uh, then uh, comes the next step. And this is uh, a quite difficult step. Uh, we need to uh, fit a model to the data. And unfortunately, there is no uh, mathematical guarantees that can show us uh, if you are, we are uh, doing well in, in this process. Um, we need to use some uh, experimentation and uh, some uh, validation trying to identify if we are uh, in the, the correct path to, to build a, a good model. Um, and this uh, verification is based on uh, a measurement about uh, the quality of your model. Uh, in general, a good measure is uh, related to uh, the, the, the error you made when you try to apply your model to the data. Uh, if your model is very good, uh, this error is somehow related to how far you, uh, your uh, model uh, predicts uh, a point closer to the, the, the standard, the gold standard, the, the re reference value uh, of your data. If you are close to this reference, then you uh, are doing well. But sometimes uh, this uh, is not possible and you need to figure out uh, uh, if there is some pattern related to the mistakes uh, in your model. Um, if the mistakes of your model are kind of uh, randomly distributed, uh, this is uh, an evidence that you maybe need more data or need more training time or a more uh, uh, powerful algorithm to, to train your data. But sometimes uh, you, uh, your predictions are not spread, uh, randomly spread, but uh, are uh, consistently, uh, systematically showing some pattern that deviates from the, your target. 
right? So uh, the work we have developed, we try to identify some particular molecules that are deviating from the tar target in a systematic way. This is the work that I'm going to show you, right? So uh, in this work, we have developed uh, a very uh, systematic uh, pipeline. So we can experiment with uh, machine learning algorithms and different representations and try to identify if there is some systematic errors in, in your process. Uh, this uh, pipeline has been recently published in the Journal of uh, Chemical and Information Modeling. And here is the, the reference. We have ev evaluated our pipeline in a benchmark data set of 139,000 uh, uh, molecules uh, that is named KM9 data set where the target is to try to predict the atomization energy of those molecules. We have used the three different state-of-the-art represent, uh, representations of the molecules and they also evaluated the, the number of molecules in the, training, uh, in the training set. In general, we, have, uh, we are able to have very good results when we use nearly uh, 10K molecules to train the model from the, uh, the 134 K molecules. Um, however, we identify that uh, some predictors, so, some representations, some descriptors uh, have different uh, mistakes in some different molecules. Uh, I mean, the error is quite hard, high for those molecules. And in particular, there is a group of near uh, 1K molecules where all the three state-of-the-art representations um, are systematically uh, predicting uh, wrongly the atomization energy, uh, right? Uh, so in this pipeline, we are able to identify those subset of molecules. And then we try to understand to better understand what's going on with this subset of molecules. Um, and we, we investigate the, the geometry of those molecules and uh, we find out that uh, this subset has a, a high number of planar molecules, molecules that we, uh, the coordinates are uh, lies in a 2D plane instead of in a, in a 3D, three dimension, dimensional space. And we identified this co uh, com computing the convex who vo volume of those molecules. The convex who volume of those molecules, of the, the molecules uh, are computed uh, wrapping the 3D geometry uh, in, uh, 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 in a closed uh, shape and it's different from the, the Van der Waals volume, where you add the volumes of uh, all those atoms to compute the Van der Waals volume. This is the, uh, the relationship between the convex rule and the Van der Waals volume. We see a very good correlation in here. Uh, and you, we observe that uh, molecules that have nearly zero uh, convex who uh, volume uh, uh, are more prominent in this subset of uh, outliers, we call outliers, uh, the, uh, the subset of mo molecules with high error uh, uh, prediction we have uh, identified. And it's different from the, 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 the global data set. And the reason for that is because uh, these planar molecules, molecules in, in, that lies in 2D space, tends to have uh, higher distances among the atoms and wider angles among the, uh, the atoms in comparison with molecules that uh, lies in the 3D space. No, don't um, and we are also able to uh, 
build a, a better model by combining uh, different representations, but I don't have much time to, to discuss that. So, so to conclude, machine learning is being successful applied in many areas, including material sciences. Uh, however, this process is not yet uh, an automatic process, uh, but a complex engineering task. Um, our study, uh, we using our study, we could identify some possible pitfalls and some possible ways to, over to overcome these pitfalls and also uh, some research directions for improving the representation of the, the molecules. Um, this is the, this, I'm a member of the P20 uh, of the, complete, the division four of the CINE. And these is, are the members of this project and in both face are the, the authors of uh, this paper and in red is the, the main author of the, the paper uh, for whom I, I think uh, I would like to thank in this uh, in this presentation and uh, to conclude this is a quote from uh, Dijkstra a, a very famous computer scientist that uh, he says that uh, computer science is more about computers is no more about computers than astronomy is about telescope that I adapted that uh, machine learning is no more about algorithms than astronomy is about telescope that I mean algorithms are more uh, a tool that should we use uh, to, to build uh, those models. Thank you and I'm happy to, to answer questions. Okay, thank you very much for a very uh, interesting talk, Ronaldo. Uh, I think we have one question in the Q and A. <clears throat> it's from Julian Silveira. Uh, thank you for your talk, Professor Ronaldo. Could you discuss further if there are methods within machine learning with higher comp computer computational cost and which benefits they bring, if there are any? Uh, we have this area of deep learning models uh, uh, we, uh, where. Uh, we have uh, algorithms that are very computationally uh, expensive, but are they uh, are achieving state of the art uh, in, in many areas, right? Uh, and on the other side of the scale, we have some very traditional models uh, that are more uh, computer, computationally efficient but sometimes are, does not have the, does not produce um, uh, uh, very accurate models. So there is this trade-off between the complexity of the model in the number of parameters uh, you have to fit the data and the time, the computational time you want to, uh, computational effort you want to put on to, to build your model. There is this, this trade-off. But the trick is to identify good representations so we can uh, uh, reduce this computational effort to, to build the uh, better models. Okay, I don't see any, I have a question. I mean, uh, I understand that you are, your work, I mean, you, the paper you presented is trying to, 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 to understand, I mean, to make uh, machine learn more reliable or more, Robust, I yep. would say, right? And do you have yep. similar uh, research in, in, in crystalline structures, other materials, other than molecules? And how how would different how different that would be? And then if you could comment a little bit on that. Yep, there is uh, some options, and there is some uh, researchers around the, the world who are which are using different approaches to try to estimate the, the, the confidence you have in a prediction and try to stretch this, this confidence to a narrow uh, space. This is a, a, a very interesting topic and there is uh, several researchers around the world that are trying to, to figure out better ways to do that. Thank you again, Ronaldo, for a very, very important work. Thank you.